Hello everyone, I'm Himija Sunkara and I'm a technical architect here at MuleSoft. Today in this Friends of Max video tutorial, we are going to discuss about spy and verify event processors under MUnit. And also we shall see how to create a basic MUnit test using spy and verify event processors. Let's start with spy event processor. The spy processor allows you to spy what happens before and after a processor is called. This will help you to validate if a mule message event reached a particular event processor containing the specific payload or variable. Overall, you should use the spy processor to perform verification or assertion. In this particular application, we can use spy before and after calling a flow reference to check if the input going into the subflow and the output coming out of the subflow are as expected or not. Next, we shall discuss about the Verify Call Event Processor. The Verify Event Processor allows you to verify if a processor was called or not. For example, you can validate if a specific processor has been called with a particular set of attributes a specific number of times. At the same time, you can configure a unit to fail a test when the verification is not successful. Attributes such as times, at least, at most will help you to find out if a processor is called or not. And if yes, how many number of times it has been called. Now let us build an application and create a MUnit test case to spy on a certain message processor before and after its execution, as well as validating the number of times a particular message processor was called. As a first step, open the studio and create a new Mule project. In order to create a new Mule project, click on the file, select new, click on Mule project. In the new Mule project window, give the project name as MUnit hyphen spy hyphen verify and select the latest mule runtime and click on finish. Once the new project is created, you will be presented with a blank canvas. From the mule palette on the right side, drag and drop a HTTP listener onto the blank canvas. Double click on this HTTP listener and under the basic settings, click on the green plus icon in order to configure the connector. I'm going to leave the configuration here under the connection section as it is and click on OK. Give the path as forward slash spy and click on save icon on the right side. Now let us go ahead and drag and drop a transform message from the mule palette and drop it in onto the blank canvas after the HTTP listener. Now let us go ahead and configure the payload. Change the media type to application JSON and give the values as and click on save icon. Now drag and drop a logger component from the mule palette after the transform message. And in the message field type payload and click on save icon. Now we have successfully configured the basic Mule application. Now let us go ahead and deploy the application. Right click on the blank canvas and click on run project and unit spy and verify. If our application is successfully configured, then it should get deployed. Our application is successfully deployed now. Let us go to the browser and type HTTP localhost 8081 spy. We got our payload value that we have configured in the transform message. Now let us go ahead and create a MUnit test case for our sample application. 
Select this flow and right click on the flow and click on M unit. Create blank test for this flow. Now a M unit test case gets created with a flow reference under the execution section which actually points to our application that we have built earlier. Now drag and drop a spy event processor from the palette into the behavior section of the test. Now let us go ahead and configure the spy event processor. Under the spy, pick the processor that you want to spy on. We are going to spy on the transform message here in this application. So let us select transform message and click on OK. And click on the save icon. Now we also want to check what is the input that is going into the transform message and also what is the output that is coming out of the transform message. Let us drag and drop uh, asset that event processor into the before call and after call. Open the asset that event processor under the before call section and give the expression as payload. And the data we function as null value. So here we are trying to see if the message that is going into the transform message is null or not. In the second as at that even processor under the after call, let us go ahead and type payload under the expression and check if the output that is coming out of the transform message is of application JSON type or not. And click on the save icon here. Now let us go ahead and type verify in the palette and drag and drop a verify call into the validation section. Under the processor, pick on a processor for which you want to verify if a call has been made or not. Here we are, sel we are selecting transform message to check if the transform message is called or not. You can also select the one of the attributes that are available here. So we are going to check if the transform message is at least called once. So I'm going to select the transform is at least and the value is one. And click on the save icon. Now that the test is set up, let's run the test suite and see if it passes. Right click on the flow and select run M unit suite. If everything was configured correctly, the console will show that the test was a success. Additionally, the M unit tab on the left side shows that the test is executed with zero errors and zero failures. When you see under M unit coverage, you can find the tab generate report. Click on the generate report. Here you can see the coverage report for this particular application. It's 100% in this case. And when you go back to your actual application, you can see green check marks on the processors, which tells that these processors are covered under the M unit test case that we have built. This is how you configure the spy and verify event processors. Thank you for watching the tutorial and see you in the next tutorial.